In this presentation, just like the plyometrics one, we're going to go through an example progression of speed and agility drills. And this presentation links back to some research papers which I've added in the description, and you should consider reading them to appreciate the order of progression exampled here. And please remember, this is just an example. So the approach taken is little and often that is the athlete has a gentle sprinkling of agility drills applied to most SNC sessions they undertake with drills grouped here by category and color and the athlete having to be relatively competent at one stage before moving on to the next and how long you spend at each stage depends on how long it takes the athlete to get good at it. I'd also note that having a good plyometric ability will mean the athlete will be even better at agility. So make more of an initial focus on plyometrics. And you'll even note how some plyo drills would seamlessly feed some of these speed and agility drills. So pairing them would be a great idea. Okay, let's start with acceleration and in this section, we'll work through each of those drills highlighted in green. Now, we'll typically start each new section actually with some relevant wall drill, as these are great at enabling the athlete to get a feel for the body position and rehearse the movement. And with all these wall drills, you're looking for parallel lines. So make sure they don't stick their bum out or hunch their back over. And equally, we want these 90 degree angles and dorsiflexion. Initially, the wall drill is simple enough. Just march on the spot and hit those shapes. Then we want to progress to rapidly switching legs. Of course, concluding each switch in the right shape. Same again now, but we're doing doubles. And our final progression is doing triples. Now, with some bodily awareness of what to do, we can start marching forward, again, hitting those shapes. And then we move to assist with that forward lean that we need from acceleration and the need to apply force back and down via a resistance band. As your technique improves and you get more fluid, then we can increase the speed. And now it's time to do some sprint starts. So we're going to start in a lunge position such that your back knee is roughly level with your front heel. Then lean forward with the opposite hand in a salute position. So this position is great as it forces you to drive with the front leg, which is exactly what we want. So the task is constrained and the athlete doesn't have to think about that part. First, get the athlete to focus on driving out like a fighter jet, and that should ensure they gradually rise up to vertical. Then get them to focus on taking lots of steps. That should keep their feet close to the ground and keep the feet under their support leg knee for the first two steps. Then get them to focus on whipping their arm back. Same again now, but Let's start from a crouching position, so we're working our way up. And now we start from standing, and hopefully they should just drop into that split stance and go. Again, all of these same coaching points. We can also have the athlete start from a three point position. The key here is to try and get the shoulders ahead of that supporting hand and the hips high. Anyone that has tried actual block starts will know how hard that is. As the final progression then we could get them to try a lying down start.
And then finally, as we will with most sections, we can conclude with some variety of a tag type game. Okay, let's uh, progress on to top speed now. So it's back to the wall to get a feel for the movement. Now, unlike accelerating, top speed is more cyclical. So what we want to imagine here is stepping over our support knee. So our first movement is to bring the heel to the bum, which will create this figure four position. And then we step over the knee. Then the foot is driven down to the ground, but makes contact such that the sole of the foot is painting the floor. So it's brushing backwards, if you like. Again, we practice away from the wall now, but we can use some hurdles to promote that high knee position, which is so critical to, to top speed. The next progression naturally is to remove the hurdles and hopefully they still hit the right shapes. That figure four, stepping over the knee, paint the floor. And then let's now go on both legs. And then we can try to do it rapidly on the spot before moving forward. Okay, now it's deceleration time. And this is a really important skill and physical capacity. So be sure to include this when working with your athletes. This is naturally the total opposite of top speed. Now we want the athlete to sit back and know with a wide base of support and full foot contact before returning to the base position we learned during plyometrics. Now we can decelerate to a lunge position, which is more intensive given one leg must do more work than the other. On to turning now, and there are lots of turns, but we're going to focus on the cut and the crossover. And we'll start with the shuffle and cut, which uses the inside of the foot, and then we move on to the crossover and using the outside of the foot. So back to the wall we go. We're starting with a shuffle and cuts. This drill teaches us about body position relative to driving from the inside of our foot. Let's go and give that a go on the field now. Big push with the inside of the foot, but staying low. And imagine you're completing this drill under a low roof. And this should encourage the athlete to drive across and not up. Same thing, but resisted. So we're requiring an even bigger push now. With the shuffle mastered, let's now introduce the cut. The key to cutting in this drill was keeping the feet close together at the turn. The wider the feet, the harder it is to lean in the direction of intended travel, and the more likely you are to go into a valgus position. For those that have seen the plyometrics video, you'll know how similar this is to the skiing drill, so doing that first, then this one makes total sense. As per other drills, we now bring in the resistance bands. Although it's resistance on the way out and assistance on the way back, with the latter challenging your ability to decelerate. And predictably, we now find ourselves testing these skills in an open environment against a partner. One leads, one follows. The one leading should hit fantastic shapes every single time because for them it's essentially predetermined so that is they decide when they want to turn for the one copying however they really have to focus on hitting those good shapes and by the way this is a great condition exercise try four sets of 20 seconds for example and it's good to see how we can work on fitness and agility simultaneously right well new drill equals wall this is the crossover now, so we shift our focus to the outside of the foot and crossing our knee over as though we're trying to break through a pane of glass. Make sure the athlete uses the front of their kneecap to 
bus through that glass and not the side of their knee. And on the point of the support foot and if it should swivel or not, leave that to the friction of the ground to decide as this will change based on surfaces and footwear. Again, we go wall to field and let's now cross over to base. But while back in that room with a low ceiling, so we drive across and not up and punch in the front of our knee through the glass. When you get good, also try going out and back as quick as you can. Now try a resisted there and assisted back. And now we're ready for some tag game or another. And now it's time to merge all that has gone before into one movement sequence and drill. So let's look at some change of direction speed drills. And there are a ton of pattern runs you can choose from that merge all the skills we've learned into one drill. And this is just the pro agility drill, just to provide one example of many. Well, thanks for listening and super thanks to Tyler and Abby for helping me put this video together.